Hello, welcome to Young Martin's Reels. Today, we're going to be working on this Shakespeare ATS-30 uh, conventional reel. And it's, uh, it's a nice reel. When I picked it up the other day, it didn't hardly want to turn. You had to really add some force to it. But uh, as I've played with it a little bit, and I really have, <laughs> haven't taken it apart or anything, I just took the line off of it and played with it a bit. And since then, look at how much freer it is. So um, I think it's running pretty good. Uh, but again, as we do here at Young Martin's Reels, we're going to go ahead and take this thing apart, clean it up, and uh, get it ready. This is the last of the four reels that Ken loaned me to uh, clean up for him for the Young Martin's Reels. And we're going to get this one done and get them back to him tomorrow. All right, so let's proceed. We're going to start off by taking off the handle. Nut lock off. I believe this is a 10 millimeter. I was correct. Slip the handle off. Okay, it's got a tensioner on it, and the tensioner is as usual been flattened out to the point where it's not really providing any tension anymore so we're going to take and tighten that up just a little bit by adding a little bend back into it okay you don't want to do that too often or they'll break all right let's go ahead and remove the drag star knob And <clears throat> it appears that we have six screws holding this cover plate on. Let's find out. Okay, and then we have two on the end here. And they are the same size as the other ones. Now, I feel the... the cover starting to lift so my guess is it's got yoke springs here that are pressing against it let's see okay we're gonna lift the cover off all right there's that last screw that's all six of them are the same so we're gonna put them over here in the corner there are our yoke springs right there which are providing our tension inside And for a change, I have a reel that looks very nice inside. Let's see. If we got a bearing here. Let's see if this, this is not an anti-reverse bearing. It's just a bearing. And let's see. We've got a sleeve that goes over top of the bearing first. Then comes the bearing. Then there's a sleeve inside the bearing. Tension washer. And someone has set these two tension washers in opposing positions, which is unusual. Usually they are nested into each other. But somebody set those two so that they were opposed to each other. So they were trying to get a little more drag out of this, I think. We're going to take this wheel off. And I think that might be part of the problem. Why I believe that these drag washers are really intended to be lubricated and i think they lubricated them so they were trying to tighten it down okay so let's see if we can lift this gear up and off and we can there's nothing under it that washer right there that white one is going to fit inside this groove right here now what i want you to see here is this is your anti-reverse on this and it's very it's about as simple as it gets that is very nice i like that a lot okay and this is held on with a c-clip right here okay so that whole thing is held together with that c-clip i don't see a point in taking that off since this is so clean under here but somebody else will have taken it apart so we're going to do it before we get to that, though, here's our yoke over here, and our yoke is what our pinion gear rides in right there. Okay, there's our pinion gear and our yoke. Let's see what we got going. 
Okay, this is our um, jack plate, and this jack plate is set in here to rotate. And I think we're going to come back and put grease on that and take, go ahead and clean that up underneath there. But we're going to take that jack plate out by removing this screw. Oh, that's a little screw. Not as little as the ones I was messing with the other day, but it's small. Okay, take our jack plate. Let's lift it out of there. Like so. In the spring, I don't really see a lot of point in taking that out. Let's see if this wash, this plastic washer comes off, and it does. Now with the washer off, okay, that's going to allow us to get to this C-clip so we can take it off. Okay, C-clip's off. I sit it on this side, and we're going to lift our... Now notice the orientation of this anti-reverse cog. It only goes one way. Make sure there's nothing under. Flip these over when you take them off. I have a bad habit of not doing that, and it almost bit me in the tail the other night. Okay, this must be our trip release under here. And there is a spring under here. Like so. All right, I'm not sure how that works yet. And now we can take out these two screws. And again, they're going to be little bitty ones. There's one. And there's two. And off comes our assembly. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, it does. It went on this way because... Those ears right there, the spring, fit on it. And this plate went on there like that. There we go. That's how it was installed. Okay, there's nothing down in there that we need to get to. That is not a bearing. It is a bushing. So what we're going to do is ever so slightly clean. Like so. Set that back in place. Clean up on this side over here where our jack plate rides. We're gonna put a little grease in there. And we're gonna come back. And we're gonna put a little grease in here. We're gonna slide this off for a second. And we'll put a little bit of grease right here. And slip this back on, like so. We're going to set it back into place, like so. And now, it's time for these two little screws to go back in. Now, if you ever have trouble with these little screws, a little dab of grease on the end of your screwdriver goes a long way towards holding them in place. go all right that shaft is ready to go again this spring was in here and it was hooked around one of these posts like so but then beyond that I don't really know what it does yes I do there's a little notch on that spring and that notch is going to ride in this little notch right here on this cog. All right. I don't know how difficult that's going to be to get it to go in there, but that's what we're supposed to have. Matter of fact, let's take the spring off and put it on the cog first. And there, like so. Okay. With that done, you need to kind of hold it in place while it goes down and then hooks this little hook on this side over that cock and it all fell apart. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe it needs to be held sideways. 
because it just falls off otherwise. And let's put a little bit of grease to help hold it on. Hope this doesn't turn into one of those things that's a real pain in the butt to do. Okay, so far that's in there. All right, holding it sideways, I'm going to slip it in like so. And then hook that, there we go, the spring goes over that right there and it's locked in. Okay, I am not real sure how that works exactly or what it's doing, but that's how it fits. That's what it's supposed to do. Next comes this cog. And that cog is going to fit down in here. Fit down on the keyway like so. And then make sure, see how the anti-reverse fits into it. Then we're going to come back and put this C-clip or E-clip, whichever one you want to call it, back on. Like that. Okay. That rides like so. Now we're going to go through this gear or uh, drag assembly. I'll lift that one out. Okay. Lift this one out. That's all of it together. Alright, so what do we have here? We have a thin fiber washer. Then we have a keyed washer. Followed up by a thin fiber washer again. Followed up by an eared washer. And then goes this one on top. And then followed up by this one. All right, let's clean the grease off of this. And since it had grease in it to begin with, we're going to put it back together that way. Is this real? I don't know that it's ever been a part since it left the factory. It looks like they had put grease in it at the factory. So I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to put it back the way the factory had it. Okay, now let's take a look at the side of this to make sure we don't have any chewed up gears. Okay, everything on that side is in good shape. We're gonna look at it both directions. Everything looks nice. So, <clears throat> we're gonna put a very small amount of drag washer grease down inside here. Just enough to coat it, not Okay, we're going to set that washer back in. We're going to follow that up with this eared washer. Follow it up by another drag washer. And these are these are lubricated. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on here because this one's a little bit sticky. So we'll set that on there. And we'll put a little grease on the back side of the eared washer and set it in place. And then we will set this HT100 looking one on here. And replace the top one. Okay, all those should fit in nicely when we go to put this back together. Okay, before we do, this one, this plastic washer is going to fit right inside there. Like so. And if it's not wanting to stay, we'll add just a little bit of grease to it. So that it will stay as we slide it together. But we want it to fit inside there. We don't, yeah, like that. We'll keep all that together. We've already shown you how it goes together. We're going to hold it over to the side a minute while we put the jack plate back in. Okay. As I said before, they had the jack plate oiled, but I think we're going to put a little grease on it because it felt a little gritty. Like maybe the metal was binding against the... Okay, set that down in there like so, and that's not too bad. And we've got this little bitty screw that they gave us. It holds in here. We're gonna put that back in like so. Okay, it's all the way down. Be careful with that. That's very gentle. I mean, it it, it would strip out real easy. 
Okay. Next, we're going to inspect our pinion gear. Make sure it looks good, and it does. And we will give it some grease. We're going to set it back down in here. See how it fits into the keyway on the spool? We're going to set that down in there. And let's go ahead and put some oil on the spool shaft. And we'll slide that gear up and down a little bit. There we go. To make sure that it stays in there. All right, this is our yoke. And your yoke is going to go in here like so. Okay. The opening is almost every one I've ever seen. The opening of the yoke has been away from the gear. All right. Now, with this ready to go back on, well, we're going we're gonna to do it in a minute. We're, let's go ahead and set the gear back in. But some of you who have been watching me for a while know that I have a tendency to forget to grease this gear. I, I always say, well, we'll do that in a minute when we get back to it, and then we don't. So we're going to put some grease on it now. And we don't want to over grease it. There we go. Something like so. Now we're ready for our two yoke springs. They go here and here. Okay, now we're going to check our trip on our eccentric over here, and it's working fine. We're going to add just a drop of oil to it. It's already greased on the face, but we're going to add some fresh grease on the face. Now, when we put this back together, we've got to make sure that that post fits in to the jack plate right here. So let's go ahead and put the jack plate down all the way, okay, which is engaged. Well, before we do that, let's go ahead and set these pieces back in. There's no reason not to. Okay, I'm going to put these back together nested. See these two? They're curved. And the way they had them, they were opposed to each other. And uh, I'm not going to put them in that way. I'm going to put them in so that they're nested together. Because I don't really think we need that extra drag on this reel. So, that's... Put those two down. Then comes the bearing collar. And comes the bearing. I started to doubt myself there for a minute. I thought there was, this was supposed to be in here. But I went back, checked my video, and no, it's correct. The way I've got it. All right. That's why it's important to take pictures and videos and all that when you're doing these reels. Okay, we're going to slide this sleeve on. That's all the sleeves. Everything's back together the way it's supposed to be. Except we've still got to get this guy where it needs to be. All right. This goes on like so. And hopefully that seems to be tripping. We get that on. Yeah, I think that's in there the way it's supposed to be. We're going to put one screw in at the front, and we're going to put one screw in at the back, and screw the uh, the drag knob on, and give that part a test real quick. Good, we did get it all right. Okay, now I can go ahead and put those rest of those screws back in. And those first two going in have convinced me that I need to put a drop of oil on each of the screws just to help them go in properly. And... Uh, that way we're not putting on undue stress on the heads of them. All 
All right, that's got that side done. Let's go ahead and pop off this other side, pull the spool out, lube it, clean it. All right, that bushing was kind of sticking, so we're gonna clean that up a little bit and then put it back on the case itself. Yeah, it had some dirt up inside there. Okay, we're gonna set that back down in here. And it actually stuck on there and had to pull out around the gear. I'm gonna clean this old blue grease off, which it looks like somebody added. Um, from what I've been told, plastic gears don't require grease. And uh, that will just tend to slow the reel down. Okay, so we're gonna wipe that off. Okay, it has a plastic clicker. But it's definitely a loud clicker. Okay, that looks good. Okay, but there was dirt and debris on this. Let's go ahead and pull that off for a minute. And clean this shaft up a little bit. That shaft has a groove on it as though it used to have a um, C-clip of, of some type on there. I don't know if it did or not. I don't have a schematic for this reel. All right. I'll put that gear back on. And we're going to move over to the worm gear. What we're going to do is try to take the pawl out. Mm. And the pawl cover is sticking. There we go. There's a washer up inside there, brass washer or copper, but I still may be able to pull the pole out with a rare earth magnet. If it's a stainless steel, I can't. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, let's see if we can tap this down a little bit. Like it's going to come down. Remember, gentle tapping. If you're going to tap on it, tap gently. There we go. Oh my goodness. Oh, that Paul needed to come out in the worst kind of way. That may be the worst Paul I've ever seen, dirt wise. It almost looks like it may have one tooth broken off. But it doesn't. That was the other paw actually had it was extended the length of it because of dirt. Okay. So it's not broken. It's in good shape. All right. Don't lose this washer. It's important. Gives the proper spacing in here. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spray some WD-40 on this worm gear. And we're going to rotate it around and try to clean it up some. And this is one I'm going to show you. I don't normally show you my cleaning because it's kind of boring. But in this instance, it's rather important. Okay, I'm going to take an acid brush and just run it back and forth along this track. And I'm going to keep coming back and adding some WD-40. I don't know if you saw that slime just climb out of there when I sprayed that, but there was quite a bit. But the way this track should look when you get done is down inside the grooves, it should actually be Shiny, not black inside. Okay, once you get one side of it clean, slide the guide to the other side and clean the other side. Just keep rotating it as you're scrubbing. And that should clean it up well. See how nice and shiny? 
those tracks are now that's what you should have then take and run yourself a cotton swab down inside where the pole rides like so get the rest of the dirt out of there and at that point you're ready to slip your pole back in okay it goes in with these fit teeth facing front and back not sideways we're going to set it in there we're going to give it a drop of oil We're going to make sure that it gets in there. And then I'm going to slide this back and forth a little bit while rotating the gear. Give it a little. There you go. Once you get it to go down like that, you should be good. Because it should hit the other end. Come back. Okay, be careful on this because you've got your guide rod right here that wants to slide out because the side case is off. So watch that. Okay. Once you know you got it in there good, it's time to put this little washer back in. There we go like so and we can now reinstall our pole cap should be able to take it all the way, most all the way down by hand and once you've got it there go ahead and rotate it again make sure you're good and then take your screwdriver and gently snug it come back add a drop of oil in the oil hole at the top and then go ahead and oil the worm gear. Fit that back in. Okay, that's all good. Everything there's clean. The worm gear's been cleaned. I can't do anything for this corrosion right here. It eat that up. Something did. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put the side cover on. We're going to scrub out the rest of the exterior of the case. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. Got one more thing to do. I want to take the spool out if I can there we go and I want to clean the spool because it's got something along the edge of it that was catching on my fingers when I was running around I think it had just a little bit of dirt on it tell you what while I got that out I'm gonna go ahead and run my toothbrush down through the insides of this while I can get to it all right that's got the frame clean the spool's clean. We're gonna go ahead one last time and oil the shaft on the spool. And we're gonna slide that back in. Like so. And we're gonna oil this bushing on the end one more time and the bearing or the shaft on the case there. All right, we're gonna make sure that this Worm, or worm, uh, the uh, level wind guide bar is installed. And we're going to rotate this around so that this gear is facing this gear. And we should be about ready to put it back together. Slide this side on, lining up these holes. Like so. Up. Oh. Let's go ahead scrub that just a little bit clean that out and add a drop of oil there for the clicker okay now put our screws back in wipe the case off all right we are down now Okay, we are down to installing the handle. Oh, before we put the handle on, goes the tensioner. There's the tensioner on, like so. Then the handle goes on. Then the nut for the handle goes on. That's a 10 millimeter. Lines up with the hole. Put the last screw in. All right, let's see what we have. First off, the handle still drop? Yes, it does. It's in great shape there. 
let's perform an operational check. Okay, that's good. Spool release. Works great. Handle. Okay, let's try the drag. It's tight. Wow, that's a good drag. Even, lubric even with the extra grease I put on it, that's still a good drag. All right, let's try the clicker. All right, there you have it. The Shakespeare ATS 30 conventional wine, level wine reel, uh, serviced and ready to go. Ken, that's four reels we got done this week for you, buddy. And um, so we did a total of six reels this week. And um, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, by all means, go ahead, hit the dislike button and leave comments. Tell me what you think. Um, this is a fairly decent reel, even, you know, it is made in China. Um, there are a lot of plastic gears over on this side for the line guide. Um, that part I'm not real crazy about, but it's got a good feel to it. Um, it's a nice reel. Um, I would go fishing with it. Uh, would it be my first choice? Probably not, but it's still a nice reel. Um, for now, that's Young Martin's Reels, signing out.